Hey guys, I am Venkat and this is part 30 of Blazor WebAssembly tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss dynamic C sharp. In C sharp, we have several built in types like string, int, bool, datetime, etc. All these are static types, meaning type checking and type safety are enforced at compile time. Let's take a look at a simple example. We have an integer variable i and it is initialized with a value of 100. Now we have a long variable and it is initialized with a value that we have in the integer variable. And then we are writing the values we have in the variables i and l. So let's run this program. As expected, both the variables have the same value 100. Take a look at this line. Long variable l is initialized with the value of int variable i. The code compiles and runs without issues. This is because int data type can be converted to a long data type without any data loss. Why? Well, long data type has a much bigger range than int data type. So integer can be converted to long without any data loss. So this is called implicit conversion and the compiler allows this. Now let's do the opposite. We have a long variable L initialized with a value of 100. We are then assigning L value to the integer variable i. Notice straight away we have a red squiggly under the variable L and when I hover the mouse over we can see the compilation error. Cannot implicitly convert type long to end. An explicit conversion exists. Are you missing a cast? So here's the important point to keep in mind. An implicit conversion is not allowed in this case because long data type has a much bigger data range than int data type and there is a potential for data loss. If we really want to convert long to int, we have to use an explicit cast like this. And then when we run this program, we see the same output as before. Now consider this example. The compiler knows this variable s is of type string and on the string data type we have this method to upper which obviously converts all the letters in the string to uppercase. Let's run this program and take a look at the output. As expected, every letter in the string is converted to a uppercase letter. Now let's take a look at this example. Instead of using this to upper method, let me replace that with this method, non-existing method. On the string type, we don't have non-existing method and the compiler knows this because at compile time, it knows this variable s is of type string and the string type does not contain this method. So we straight away get a compilation error. String does not contain a definition for non-existing method. So this compile time checking of the code is called static binding and it's a good thing because we are able to catch errors at compile time instead of runtime. Now, this new type dynamic is introduced in C Sharp 4 and as the name implies, we use it to write dynamic C Sharp code. Let's take a look at an example. Let's create a variable of type dynamic, name the variable D and it's going to contain this string dynamic C Sharp tutorial. And notice when I press D dot, IntelliSense does not show anything because D is of type dynamic and it can contain literally anything. Now let's see what's going to happen if I call to upper method and let's write this to console. Our program compiles and runs as expected and we see every letter in the string converted to an uppercase letter. Now let's see what's going to happen if we change the method that we are calling here from to upper to something like non-existing method. Now when we compile this, notice we have a successful build but now let's try to run and see what's going to happen. Notice we have a runtime binder exception because at runtime, it's trying to bind this method, non-existing method to string type and then invoke it. Because string does not contain such a method, it fails with runtime binder exception. So here's the important point to keep in mind. Even with dynamic c -sharp code, type checking and type safety is enforced. The only difference is it is enforced at runtime instead of compile time. We have a variable here of type dynamic and it contains the string. Now let's try to get the type of the dynamic variable using getType method and write it to the console along 
the value we have in the variable. We have another dynamic variable here, but the value is an integer and we are doing the same thing, getting its type and writing the value to the console. So let's run this and see the output we have. Notice at runtime, .NET is able to figure out the actual type that is present in the dynamic variable. In the first variable, we have a string and in second variable, it's an integer. So the key point to keep in mind is with static C sharp code, type checking and type safety are enforced at compile time. And with dynamic C sharp code, they are enforced at runtime. Conversion from static types like int, double float, etc. to dynamic and vice versa does not require an explicit cast. These conversions are done implicitly. Let's take a look at a few simple examples. We have an integer variable i1 with a value 100. We are assigning it to the dynamic variable d1. And then we are printing the values of i1 and d1. Let's run this example. There we go. Both the values are printed as expected. So the point is the static type integer is implicitly converted to dynamic type d1. Now let's say if the opposite is possible. Let's initialize this dynamic variable d1 to a value of 100 and then assign it to integer i1. And then as usual, we will print the values to the console. Again, we have the values printed as expected. Not just simple types, even complex types like product, employee, customer can be implicitly converted to dynamic and vice versa. Let's take a look at an example. We have an employee class here with two properties, first name and last name. In the main method, let's create an instance of employee object. We have both first name and last name properties populated. And then we are creating a variable of type dynamic, assigning it the value of employee object. Let's print the values that we have in this dynamic variable, first name and last name. There we go, same output as before. Now, when there is no potential for data loss, C Sharp allows certain data type conversions to happen implicitly. For example, from a double to integer, long to integer, etc. Double and long have much bigger range than integer. So converting to int will not result in any sort of data loss. Hence, the conversion happens implicitly. This is true both with static and dynamic C Sharp. In this example, we have an integer variable i1 initialized with a value of 100. We then have a variable of type double and we are assigning it the integer variable value. C Sharp compiler allows this because double has a bigger range than integer and allowing this conversion implicitly does not result in any data loss. Finally, print the values of integer and double variables. There we go. We have the output as expected. Another example, we have an integer variable i2 initialized with a value of 200 and then a long variable initialized with the integer value. Finally, print the values and we see the output as expected. So both long and double have a bigger range than integer. So there is no potential for data loss. Hence, the C Sharp compiler allows these conversions to happen implicitly. The same is true even with dynamic C Sharp. We have an integer variable i1 with a value of 100. We are then creating a dynamic variable and storing the integer in it. And then we are creating a variable of type double and storing the dynamic variable value in it. Finally, let's print all these values to the console. So we are converting from static type integer to dynamic and from dynamic to static type double. Let's see if these conversions are allowed implicitly. There we go. We see the value 100 in all the three variables. Another example. We have a static integer variable. We are then converting that to dynamic integer. We are then finally converting the dynamic integer to a static long and then finally printing all the variable values. There we go. In both these examples, the conversions are implicitly allowed. Explicit conversions. Converting large data types to smaller data types is not allowed implicitly because there is a potential for data loss. You can use an explicit cast though. Again, this is true for both static and dynamic C sharp.
In this example, we have two static variables, d1 of type double, i1 of type integer. Double variable is initialized with a value of 1000 and then we are assigning that value to this integer variable, basically trying to cast double to integer. And this conversion is not implicitly allowed because there is potential for data loss. And straight away, we see a red squiggly under this d1 variable. And look at the error message, cannot implicitly convert type double to int. And if we want to do this conversion, we need to do an explicit cast like this. And then finally, let's print the variable values. There we go. We have the output as expected. Even with dynamic C sharp, an explicit cast is required when converting larger data types like double to integer. Let's look at an example. We have a static variable d of type double. We are then creating a dynamic variable and storing the double value in it. And then we are trying to convert dynamic double to static integer. Let's see if this is allowed. Finally, let's print the variable values to the console. First, let's build the project. We have a successful build, but let's run this project and see what's going to happen. We have a runtime binder exception. Cannot implicitly convert type double to int. If we want to do this conversion, we need an explicit cast like this. Let's build the solution. Build succeeded. Let's try and run it. There we go. We have the output as expected. Now, by looking at the examples we have discussed so far, you might be thinking, why do we need Dynamic C Sharp? What benefits it provides? Well, Dynamic C Sharp has several benefits. For example, it simplifies processing JSON API data. When an API returns JSON data, we usually create another strongly typed class in our application and map JSON data. However, in scenarios where we do not want to create yet another model class, but still want to be able to consume and process JSON data, we can make use of Dynamic C Sharp. We'll see an example of this in our upcoming videos. Dynamic C Sharp also makes it possible to interoperate with other programming languages like Ion Ruby or Ion Python, for example. If you're wondering, why do we need to interoperate with other programming languages? Well, to use features of these other languages that C Sharp doesn't support. With the help of Dynamic C Sharp, we can perform COM interop even if we don't have reference to the interop assemblies. So COM interoperability is simpler and easier. With Dynamic C Sharp, it's easier to write reflection code, which in turn makes the code more readable and maintainable. Let's look at a simple example. In this example, we have a simple calculator class with one method add. This method takes two numbers, adds them and returns the sum. Now let's see how to invoke this add method in this calculator class using reflection. So first let's create an instance of the calculator class. On the instance, let's call get type method to get the type of the object. On that we have invoke member, which we are going to use to invoke add method of this calculator class. And if you look at this method, it has got several parameters that we need to pass. The first parameter is the name of the method that we want to invoke. In our case, it is add. So let's specify that. And then we specify binding flags. In our case, we are invoking a method. So let's specify the flag as invoke method. And then we have to specify the binder that we want to use. We're going to use the built-in .NET binder. So let's pass now. And then we have to specify the object instance, which we are going to use to invoke the add method. We already have the instance and that is calculator. So let's pass that. And then we need to specify the parameters that we want to pass to this add method. It takes two parameters, first number and second number. So let's create a new object array and then pass 10 and 20 as the values. And then whatever this invoke member method returns, let's store that in a variable. Let's call it result. And then finally print the result to the console. Let's run the program. There we go. We have the output as expected. Now, take a look at the amount of code that we have to write to make this work. First of all, there's a lot of code. And more importantly, it's not easy to understand what this code is trying to do. 
and hence it's not easy to maintain as well. Now let's see how easy it is to do the same thing using Dynamic C Sharp. First of all, let's delete everything that we have here. Create a variable of type dynamic. Let's call it calculator. And we want to create a new calculator instance. And notice when I type calculator and then dot, we don't see from the IntelliSense add method because the variable calculator is of type dynamic. But we know the calculator object itself has got add method. So add, and we know this method takes two parameters, first number and second number. So let's pass 10 and 20 as the values. And whatever result this method returns, let's store it in a variable, call it result, and then finally print it to the console. Notice how easy it is to write this code, and it is also easy to understand what this program is trying to do. Now let's run and see the output that we get. There we go, sum is 30 as expected. .NET provides a built-in dynamic type called Expando object. Syncfusion Blazor components support Dynamic C Sharp and Expando object. We'll discuss Expando object and using it with Syncfusion Blazor components in our upcoming videos. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.